31, let's take a look at how we can solve this quadratic equation by completing the square. Um, you don't have to complete a square to solve this one. You can use the quadratic formula. Now, well, again, that always works. I could try to factor it if I wanted to, but there is nothing that multiplies to 20 and adds up to 10. So I get stuck trying to factor. So completing a square is, it's again, it's one of those techniques that will always work. I just happen to prefer the quadratic formula to completing the square, and the quadratic formula also always works. So I don't complete the square super often, but we will use this technique of completing a square to solve some, um, to graph some conic sections later on in the semester. So it's a good technique to learn. Um, where completing the square differs from the quadratic formula and factoring is that you actually don't want your equation set equal to zero. You want the constant on the right side of the equation and all the terms with variables on the left side. So this is how this goes. I'm gonna add the 20 over here, okay? And I'm gonna leave some space. Right, and I'll show you what I mean by leave some space. So I'll have x squared plus 10x on the right, and I'll have 20, excuse me, x squared plus 10x on the left, and I will have 20 on the right. So here is what we're going to do. We wanna add some number to this side of the equation, and we'll balance it and we'll add the same number to the other side of the equation, but we wanna add some number to this side of the equation that will turn this into a perfect square trinomial. And when you hear me talk about perfect square trinomial, let me just give you a for instance, right? Let's say I had something like x squared plus four x plus four. I could rewrite that as x plus two quantity squared. And if you don't believe me, think about foiling this out, x plus two, x plus two, or double distributing, but I'll, I'll foil it, right? It'd be first, outer, inner, last, which is ultimately two x and two x gets you back to four x. So what I would like to do is find this number, I should say, so that I can turn this trinomial into a perfect square. All right, and then that'll allow me to use the square root property. So here's the mechanics. And again, this was just an example. For example, it doesn't have anything directly to do with this problem other than I'm gonna give, me, give you some mechanics here. So what we're going to do to determine this number, all right, and I'm gonna erase this circle. To determine this number, you always take the number in front of the linear term you take half of it and square it. So go with me. The number in front of our linear term right now is 10. Half of positive 10 is positive five, okay? And I'm just putting these up here for notes. Square that number, all right? Positive five squared is 25. So that's the number that you wanna drop here. I'm gonna put plus 25 here, and to balance it out, I'm gonna put plus 25 there. So let me repeat this. If you ever wanna complete a square, all right? Get your variables, let me um, put my, block this number with my fingers for a minute. Whatever equation you start with, get the constant on the right side of the equation and leave everything with variables on the left side. And then you're gonna have to determine what number you wanna put in, in where my first finger is, where my pointer finger is, to turn this left side into what we call a perfect square trinomial. Now how I got 25 here is I took half of the linear term Half of 10 was five, five squared 25. And you can see the same thing working here. What is half of four? Positive two. What is positive two squared? Positive four. So whatever that squared term is, add it to both sides, all right? So I think you'll give me that the right side is equal to 45. Now the left side turns into a perfect square trinomial, all right? So how can I rewrite x squared plus 10x plus 25 as a binomial squared. Well, what squares to x squared? x. What squares to 25? Positive five. Why do I know this is positive five and not negative five? Because I had the positive 10x here, right? Ultimately, half of that linear term, half of positive 10 was positive five. That's what I drop here, okay? So with that being said, now you can apply the square root property, right? I can square root both sides and I know x plus five will equal either the positive or negative root of square root of 45. So if I look at this, I can simplify. This is x plus five. Just so we start speeding things up, what's living inside of 45 is nine and five. So this will be plus or minus three root five. 
All right, and if I move the five over, my end answer will be negative five plus or minus three root five, okay? Now, that's one technique, that's completing the square. Again, if that's not your favorite, that's okay. You could always use the quadratic formula, but just to review up, right, if you wanna complete the square, you're gonna move the constant over, take half of the linear term, square it, add that number to both sides, rewrite your trinomial as a perfect square binomial, and then use the square root property. So we're gonna practice this in the next example, but things are gonna get slightly more complicated because in this example, your lead coefficient was one. Things are always easier when your lead coefficient is one. It's true for factoring, it's true for the quadratic formula, and it's true for completing the square. So when we get to example four, you have a more convoluted problem, and we're gonna solve it via completing the square. All right, I'll see you in a few, bye.